What's going on everyone? Steven here, back with another Cuphead tutorial video for you. Today I'm going to talk about multi-jump, so make it to where you can just jump, 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 as much as you want. Um, and so just jumping right in here, I've already found the value. Typically when you're looking for jumping, you have two values you're interested in, zero and one. All right, so from a high level perspective, you can think of it like a variable has jumped has the player jumped yet so while the player is on the ground that value is zero the player has not jumped when the player jumps set that value to one or true player has jumped all right so now what happens when the player has jumped is it prevents the player from jumping again so you know games that have double jump you know it counts how many times the player has jumped and then once you reach that ceiling you cannot jump anymore what we want to do is remove any jump limits all right so you typically look for a zero and a one so zero when you're on the ground one in, when you're in the air but in this game it actually has zero one and two that are written so one when you jump and then two I don't know, it's something I haven't reversed yet, but there are two different states to the jump, um, but you don't always have to perform the second one. So the first one is jumping, you see the character jumping and spinning. Now watch, see the hand flying out? That's parrying, that's doing the parry slap. All right, so anyway, Pretty much to find this value, if you had looked for 0 and 1, you wouldn't have found it doing scans like that. So this is where you can start for an unknown initial value, or maybe start with 0, and then just do changed and unchanged scans to whittle your way down to X number of results, and then do what I like to call the rule of halves, which in one of my previous videos I showed you, you just right-click, create a header, and this is a convenient little place you can throw let's say you have a thousand results here you can you know click and drag those thousand results down into here or 500 of them toggle all of them see what happens with your character or whatever you're looking for and then just keep untoggling by half until you get down to a handful and then you can toggle one by one or untoggle to whittle your way down to your value right so it can take a little bit of time but Sometimes you just have to do it um, if you're if scanning is your only option or your primary option. All right, so I've gone ahead and I found the value here. I've got it. So now what you can do once you find that value is right click, and I usually like to start with find out what accesses this address to look for instructions that are constantly watching for the state of your player has has the player jumped or not whatever so I'm just gonna start with the first instruction that pops up here I'm gonna go show disassembler all right now I went ahead and also enabled or activated the mono features a little bit ago so I've got these handy symbol names here handle jumping I mean <laughs> it doesn't get any more obvious than that right what's going on so uh, we have landed on this instruction here, which we see there's a value. Okay, this is pretty tricky for those of you who are fairly new to assembly. Okay, so this instruction right here, where I'm hovering my mouse, move EDI plus 44 into EAX. All right, so that is putting <clears throat> a memory address into EAX. Okay, then this next instruction below you see EAX plus 8 which is a memory address plus the offset 8 the value in there is being put into EAX so it may seem weird it's like well EAX has this memory address in it how are you gonna like put this thing into here or whatever right but this is a pointer it's pointing to a memory address and to take a value out of a memory address that you have stored in EAX and put that value in EAX is kind of like a good optimization technique. So they're just reusing EAX basically. All right, then we have a test, which is um, a bitwise and that's performed that sets a few flags, sign flag, 
zero flag and uh, I think the parity flag they get set okay if you ever want to change flags for some reason with something like in real time you can right click on it put change register or click change register at this location and here you can kind of put your own values in here set flags the way you want them you know just for quick on the fly testing all right so then we have this jump if not equal based on the result of this test so one of the things that we could do first is all right what happens if we get rid of this jump let's replace it with code that does nothing all right and let's press jump a bunch of times and see what happens look at that we have infinite jump so you can just jump 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 all right now this is where testing your script comes in handy because as you can see we are jumping jump as much as we want however I can't parry on this that's not necessarily a deal breaker because if you land you can jump jump and on the second jump you get the parry you know and so there's something that's like once you've hit a parry if you're in the air you can parry again but once we've jumped twice and done the parry it's gone so what can we do about that if you want to do something about that right all right so first things first let's keep track of this we've come this far let's right click restore with original code you can go tools auto assemble template AOB injection we're gonna call this nth jump all right and I'm gonna keep the AOB scan but get rid of the alloc I'm gonna to go to nth jump here and I am going to just let's see how many bytes is that one two three four five six all right instead of jumping to new memory I'm just gonna DB one, two, three, four, five, six. Six knobs. All right. I'm just going to write six knobs to that location. This keeps us from allocating memory. Don't have to deallock any of that. Okay. So now it'll do the AOB scan and apply this uh, and then use that as a reference point. So first it will write knobs and then when we disable the script, it will write its original bytes back to it. So let's go to File, assign this to Current Cheat Table, close it. All right, let's enable it, and we're still working. Okay, good. So let's rename this Infinite Jump. So now that we've done that, presumably we still have our value here, right? Let's close this. All right, I'm going to close this and then do it again. So. Um, I just did that because there was a bunch of results in there and I just want to start fresh. So find out what accesses this address. All right. Now let's jump. All right. See these things that pop up here? Jump. Jump. And based on when you see these counts happen, you can kind of guess what some of these instructions have to do with landing on the ground. Maybe this instruction right here knows that when you hit the ground, it plays the smoke you know it does the smoke effect or animation here when you land anyway all right so what we want to do is look for one of these that change whenever we do the parry animation so I'm gonna go jump jump and let's see if any of these like change change all right jump 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 this one right here jump 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 all right so this one presumably has to do with our parrying maybe all right let's stop let's go show disassembler all right look what this one's called handle parry all right looks like we are in a good spot right um our code looks familiar here kind of the same thing we saw before what's in edi being moved to eax and then that happening the test jump if equal what happens if we get rid of this jump here replace with code that does nothing all right 
Let's enable our infinite jumps so we have that and maybe infinite parrying. Let's see what happens. That did not work. All right. So let's, we'll keep infinite jumps enabled just so we can have that. All right. So here's where you can right click, restore with original code. All right. Jump if equal. Um, let's go ahead and do a break and trace and see what we see. So we're going to right click here. We're going to say find out, uh, or I'm sorry, break and trace instructions. Okay. And I'm going to check, uh, I usually do save stack snapshots. Um, and that's so, you know, if you're interested in values that are on the stack, you'll have those to look at. Step over instead of single step, this will skip over any calls that you run across. So this call here, let's say we run into that. Instead of this trace going into that call and following it, it'll just skip over this call and just keep going. So this allows us to see farther up the chain and in execution instead of drilling farther down into it from where you are. So I'm going to say OK. That popped up over here. All right. I just did a jump. All this popped up. Right click, expand all. OK, here we have this jump if equal. All right. And then it did jump. Double click that and it went there. So that jumped pretty far. Um, let's see what this is here. All right, handle input. I think we're getting outside of where we want to be. I think we want to see down inside of this code. All right. So we did our break and trace at the jump. That means that regardless of if this jump is satisfied or not, the break and trace is going to happen. Okay. And we saw from that break and trace that we did take the jump. So let's go inside the jump and let's do a break and trace here and see what it is about execution that leads to this point. So we'll right click here, break and trace instructions. I still have all this stuff set up. Click OK. Come back in here. Jump. OK, this is good. Nothing's popping up yet because I haven't done the parry slap yet. So hopefully when I do the parry slap, stuff will pop up here. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to right click, expand all, and here we go. We get to drill down into this. And anything that you double click here, it'll take you to that spot over here. So, and for those of you who aren't very familiar with break and trace, you have the values in your registers over here. If something is referencing a memory address, like a pointer here, you can see the value in that pointer here. It'll usually put it up there for you. If you're messing with uh, the FPU, XMM registers, that's all here. Stack, because I told it to save uh, values on the stack. As you go through each instruction here, you can watch the stack with that stack view. All right. So now what we want to do is you can just come through here and look for some compares or places where it moves values you know, in certain places. I want to try to find where it writes values to our memory address. So as you look through here, um, let's go back here. The one that we landed on was this instruction right here whenever we were seeing what accesses the address, this EAX plus eight, all right? So as we get inside this jump, we can look for EAX plus eight and try to follow that and see what's going on, okay? So EAX plus eight, we can keep looking down, see what we see. Um, EAX, uh, let's see here. Well, not really seeing much else, EAX plus C. Um, so instead of that, let's check for some moves that we have going on. EAX plus eight. Oh, here we go. Yeah. All right. EAX plus eight. Let's move one into EAX plus eight, which is farther down. That's here. Okay. So if we were to double click, you know, this is the spot. 
This one's right in zero. Okay, so let's try to first with this zero win, let's replace this with code that does nothing and see what happens. Let's jump. Things are still the same. Restore with code. What about this value that's being written there? Replace with code that does nothing. Okay. Look at that. We are parrying with each jump. And I'm just going to keep jumping. All right. So, awesome. What that means is we can restore with original code. Okay. And go tools, auto assemble, template, uh, AOB injection. Okay. And we'll call this nth parry. You don't have to do AOBs. What you can do is make sure that you have the mono features activate whenever you enable your script. Um, and you can use those symbol names instead, right? Uh, but I'm just going to use this AOB for now. You might have to make it more unique, maybe not. Anyway, um, also with this, we have how many bytes? All these through the zeros. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that we want to up. We don't have to allocate memory, none of that. Let's just go to INF Perry. DB, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. Yep. And then we can get rid of these two knobs here. Get rid of this. And get rid of that. And now what we could actually do, this can take a little more time, but this infinite jump script, let's disable that. Let's open it. And if you want to consolidate, make your script look all tidy and not worry about some of this stuff. You can actually throw this AOB scan into here uh, as well as this. And finally this. Go unregister symbol and then for the disable we'll add this in. Okay, so now let's say OK, close this, minimize that, close our break and trace, close this. Okay, let's try to jump. Everything's back to normal. Let's enable the script. It can take a second, especially when you have multiple AOBs in a script. There we go, it's working. So that script now... Uh, does what we want it to do. We've got as many jumps as we want, and we can parry with any of those jumps. Perfect. So we've kept the functionality of parrying as well. Pretty cool stuff, huh? I I love doing this stuff. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> you know? Um, but, you know, this is just a good thing to show you that a little bit of testing can go a long way. Try to think of different scenarios where like, okay, we gave ourselves infinite jump, but oh, by the way, we can't parry with every jump. Um, especially if you are making trainers or anything for anyone else, these can be, you know, value add things, little attentions to detail. So also with this, we are doing an AOB scan, which we could replace with the symbol names. Uh, by activating mono features, which I can't think of it right now, but there's a way that you can do that in the script. It's like activate mono, something like that. Anyway, uh, but you can just throw that in your script and you could use symbol names instead of um, using these bytes. But we're not allocating any memory, we're just overwriting bytes. So very efficient, very cool. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, go check out the other videos. If you haven't yet, give me a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back soon with another video. I'm not sure how many more Cuphead ones I'm going to do. I'm going to jump into Terraria soon. I have some cool stuff to show all of you with that game. Um, yeah, so thanks again for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.